everybody. I'm Amanda Pratt, licensed clinical social worker in the state of Florida, licensed master social worker in the state of Michigan, and I'm the chronic illness therapist. Today, I wanted to record a video for you about what exactly is brain fog and how can it impact our mental and emotional health. So brain fog is this symptom that comes with a lot of chronic illnesses that you all might experience, I experience, and it tends to be described in really general and vague descriptions, right? Like, what is brain fog? Well, it's just feeling foggy in your brain and not being able to remember things and not being able to think about things clearly. But what exactly is happening when we have brain fog and how does it impact us? I think understanding and knowing these things can help us communicate more clearly with other people around us about what's going on and, and also to think about what kind of accommodations we can put in place for ourselves to help us get through that. Brain fog is essentially a set of symptoms. So it's a general term we use to describe a set of symptoms that impact or affect our cognitive processes. And um, it comes with a lot of medical conditions, autoimmune diseases like lupus and MS, um, neurological conditions like ME-CFS and migraines, POTS, dysautonomia. It can also come with mental illnesses like depression and anxiety. It can come with systemic uh, pain syndromes like fibromyalgia. And also it can come with taking certain medications like treatments for cancer. Um, so it's really something that happens very commonly, uh, but we don't necessarily fully understand or talk about what it is. So what, what brain fog is, is it's essentially problems with our executive function, our ability to remember things, our ability to process information, and our ability to communicate those things, to concentrate and pay attention um, and organize our thoughts, right? So when we have brain fog, it's not that we're having any kind of progressive uh, problem with our intellect or our cognition. We're not experiencing dementia, for example, or Alzheimer's, and we're not losing our intellect. It's our ability to just process information in the moment, store that information and access that information because of things that are going on in our body. So what are the ways that brain fog can manifest into symptoms? Um, so brain fog can essentially uh, manifest as problems with planning and organizing, uh, concentrating and controlling our mental focus, analyzing and processing information. It can actually impact our ability also to control and uh, regulate our emotions and our behavior. It can manifest as problems remembering details, managing time, multitasking, problem solving. Any kind of executive function disorder will impair one or more of these skills. So what that looks like is gonna be different for everybody and it's gonna impact our activities of daily living because of that, okay? So um, symptoms that you can experience when you have brain fog might be things like um, having trouble regulating your emotions, especially when it comes with pain or fatigue, it makes it, um, makes it much harder to do. Uh, you might find yourself being more impulsive. You might find yourself having problems starting a task. I know I have significant problems starting tasks and also connecting like step by step. I might get through one or two steps and then completely fall apart and not be able to finish. So you might have problem completing tasks. You might have problem planning for things, planning events, organizing um, or planning future things that you need to do like making a list, those types of things. You might have trouble listening or paying attention. I know one of the ways this comes up for me is when I'm really foggy, um, if the TV is on and my partner is trying to talk to me at the same time, I will have to stop the TV, look at him and say, okay, can you please start over and talk a little more slowly? I'm having trouble focusing today. And so I have to make sure everything else that's distracting is turned off 
so that I can focus on that one thing. And even that can be really hard. Um, so trouble listening or paying attention. Short-term memory issues. I hear this a lot from clients that they feel like they, they just can't remember anything. Um, so putting things into place like memory aids and reminders are really helpful. But even then sometimes you forget what you've forgotten and you forgot what you were supposed to remember. <laughs> so that can be really challenging. Um, inability to multitask or balance tasks. So being able to do two things at once where you might normally be able to do that when you have brain fog, it's next to impossible to do. Um, some of the things that can come up with executive function, function trouble are things like socially inappropriate behavior or inability to learn from past consequences. So this one comes up when we maybe can't read a social situation or social cues, which I've heard from people, and that can actually induce social anxiety because if they're in a brain fog and they feel like they don't quite understand what someone is saying or what their behavior means because they can't attend to their executive function um, uh, part of their brain and those things that are normally there helping them navigate those things, and that can be really confusing, okay? Inability to solve problems. So we use one of our biggest coping skills that we might use is problem solving. And so if we are having executive function problems, then problem solving is going to be that much harder to do. Um, difficulty learning or processing new information. Sometimes what I hear people say is they have trouble getting a thought out. So they, they have a thought that they're having, but they can't turn that into saying a word. And I know I've had that problem as well, jumbling up words, um, processing information. So auditory processing, taking something that you heard and, and understanding what it is that, that you just heard, uh, visually speaking, looking at something and understanding what you're looking at. I know I've had times where I was trying to read a menu and I said to my partner, I know there's a word here that I should understand, but I have no idea what it is and I, it's not processing. Um, and I've done that as well with hearing things like, you just said something to me, but I can't remember what you just said. Can you please say it again? I'm not processing it, right? So that's all a, a result of brain fog. Um, so the way that this can impact us in our daily life are it can it can affect work and school function, obviously. It can affect our relationships if people don't understand what's going on and we're not able to communicate with them. Um, it really can impact our ability to keep a stable mood. So it can bring up mood issues with us with that emotional regulation piece. It can bring up low self-esteem. It can actually put you into a depression because you feel like you're losing your mind. You can't remember anything. You're not understanding things the way that you normally would and you can't complete tasks. I mean, reasonably, that's going to impact your self-esteem and can trigger some depression symptoms for you or even anxiety. Uh, it can lead to us avoiding doing things, avoiding difficult tasks or just putting them off and not doing them at all because they're so hard. Um, and then low motivation or a loss of interest in activities. So these are all very normal things to experience when you have brain fog. The important thing is, I think, you know, hopefully in this video will help with that, is understanding that this is a problem in your cognition. And just like any other disability, we have to put things into place and think about what can I do to help accommodate myself for that. One of the recommendations I offer people is to go to askjan.org. JAN stands for Job Accommodations Network. And this is a resource for people who are working. And even if you don't have a job, if you're in school or if you're just at home trying to navigate things, it has a, a wealth of information about what, what are reasonable accommodations for certain challenges like this. So ADHD is a diagnosis that, um, you know, famously is a dysfunction in executive function. And so if you go on askjan.org and you type in resources for ADHD, it's gonna bring up a lot of recommendations for accommodations for things like memory aids and um, um, executive task problems with attention and focus and, and processing. And so 
that's a great resource that you can access and see if any of those things are things you can put in place for yourself at home or at work. Um, maybe this, this video will help you communicate with a partner or a friend or family member to help them understand better what's happening when you experience brain fog so that, you know, maybe they can also help and support you and have a little more compassion for what's happening when you're in these uh, states or flares of brain fog. Um, so I hope this helps in some way. And please, if you have any resources that you found helpful with your brain fog, please comment them below. And, and hey, if you're here and you're not a subscriber to my YouTube channel yet, go ahead and click the like button on this video so that it tells YouTube to show it to more people that you find it useful. And also subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified of new videos that I uh, put out and release on, on topics similar to this. So thanks for joining us and um, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.